Hello there and welcome into this week's edition of BTN Soccer Report. Kevin Egan alongside Chicago Fire goalkeeping coach and BTN Soccer analyst Aaron Hyde. Aaron, yourself and the Chicago Fire have a huge weekend ahead of you, a trip to New England. Yeah, that's right. You know, a good opportunity for us to get three points. But, you know, these final two games are important that we maintain good form, get ready for the playoffs. You know, if results uh, in the other games go our way, great. If not, we're still finishing in a good spot. Yeah, well, best, of luck, best of luck to you and your team. But for now, let's go back to Big Ten soccer. And it was a big game over the weekend for John Trask's Wisconsin. They got the better of Michigan by two goals to one, a cracker in Madison. And now let's check out the rest of the highlights. Unfortunately, we didn't have footage of that game. So let's look at Northwestern hosting seventh-ranked Notre Dame at Lakeside Field. Aaron, you were there. Great atmosphere. Yeah, you know, one of the bigger programs in the, in the country, so it was a good turnout. Yeah, and the Wildcats got off to a perfect start. Joey Calistri, the fabulous freshman with a fine finish, Aaron. Yeah, uh, questionable offside, cool, but nonetheless, you know, cool composed finish from the freshman. And then in the second half, Calistri does really well here to win the ball back, and he feeds Lepe Sutani, who does the rest for his first goal of the season. Yeah, you know, majestic finish from the wee man, uh, capitalising on some sloppy defending from uh, Notre Dame. Yeah, so Tim Lenehan's men up 2-0 at the break, but the Irish got back into it late in the second half, just less than five minutes remaining. And Patrick Hoden, a good Irish name, with the goal. Yeah, I mean, several chances there for uh, on the night for Northwestern to kill the game, uh, and obviously this one uh, certainly uh, made the game a lot tighter uh, to finish off. But, uh, you know, regardless, big 2-1 win for Northwestern. Yeah, first win over a top 10 ranked side since 2008. And what about Bob Warming's team looking for his side tight first win in five games? And Aaron, what about this for a perfect start? Yeah, you know, Zach Bennett spills the shot here and, you know, then Daniel Burnham tries his luck and scores what has been you know, put, uh, Penn State's uh, second goal in the uh, last five games. You know, Bennett's got to hold the ball there, first one. And then just two minutes into the second half, this happened. You know, Cardinal sin for a goalkeeper, come for a cross. Don't get anything near it, and it's really, really unfortunate for Keener there. It comes back off him. Just seven minutes later, Michigan State found a way back into the game through Adam Montague. Yeah, great finish, but you know, don't, John Gallagher slightly out of position there, not round on the cover, um, and, but cool, composed finish nonetheless. Okay, so a fine win for Bob Warming's team. Now let's move along to Northwestern hosting Ohio State Sunday afternoon. Beautiful day. Lake, Lake Michigan. The girls were out in force and so was Peter O'Neill, former Northwestern captain. And in the 35th minute, Eric Weberman. Aaron, what's this all about? Disaster goal. Nothing else that can be said here. This ball's travelled such a long way. One, nobody, nobody, nobody defends it well and attacks it. And then for me, Alex Wimmer still got to be able to move and make a save here. OK, so that capped off a 1-0 win for Northwestern and a wonderful win for Tim Lenahan's side. But Ohio State had their chances in the second half, and unfortunately, nothing came of it. So well done, Tyler Miller. Great week for the Wildcats. And I'm delighted to welcome in Northwestern head coach Tim Lenehan. Tim, a 1-0 win is never very comfortable for a coach. Assess your performance for me, please, yesterday against Ohio State. Yeah, we had a very emotional win on Tuesday over Notre Dame. Um, and I thought we came out maybe not with the same energy we did yesterday, but, uh, you know, it was very windy. The conditions were really tough. And, uh, you know, we found a way to get a goal, and, and then we just kind of defend it really well. I thought we, we really did a good job defensively, obviously. Wanted to do a little more with our possession and things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, anytime you can grind out a, a good one nothing win against a solid Ohio State team, you know, I was pretty happy at the end of the day. Let's go back to that Notre Dame win during the week. That's a season-defining win, surely. How does that affect morale in the dressing room when you beat a top-10 team? It's your first win against a top-10 side since 2008. Well, it's our first win against a team ranked in the top-10. I mean, if you look at the, end, the RPIs at the end of the year, uh, you know, usually there's some Big Ten teams in that RPI. So... Uh, we've beaten some Big Ten. We've beaten some teams that were ranked in the top ten, but not necessarily ranked at the time we played them. Um, so, but you know, anytime you play Notre Dame, and especially this this Notre Dame team this year is fantastic. I saw them play, you know, just before us against Georgetown. They put a three nothing pasting on them, and, and to be able to come back with a with a great result at home, you know, our guys played really well, particularly in the first half. What was really interesting about that game is the wind shifted at halftime, so we really had to go against the wind uh, both halves. So that old story about your father walking uphill both, you, 
both, you know, uphill both ways to school. That actually came to fruition in that game that we played. Now, wind at Lakeside Field. You're well used to that. <laughs> now, Neil Jones was... Yeah. Um, Neil Jones, your associate head coach, was on our show earlier in the year and he mentioned that you were trying to shore up your back line. Four out of your last six wins, you've kept clean sheets. Are you happy with the way your back four are performing? I, I think when they play well, we, we're going to do okay. I mean, uh, the couple games that we've lost, those guys didn't play well, uh, Nico and Jared. But, uh, you know, luckily for us, out of 13 games, that's only two. So, but the rest of the group between Grant Wilson and uh, Scott Lakin and, and obviously Tyler Miller behind them. But, you know, team defending is team defending. Everybody's got to make a commitment all over the field. But certainly that back four, and, and particularly Nico and Jared, have done a great job. Superb. And looking a little bit ahead at Joey Calistri, your fabulous freshman, he's been superb this season. <clears throat> Went on a little bit of a drought, but how great was it for you to see him score against Notre Dame? Yeah, and the great thing about Joe, he has a phenomenal work rate. So for him, all the answers of any difficulties he's having comes through extra work at practice. So when somebody has that kind of work ethic and is that committed to getting better, you know, good things are going to happen, no doubt. So for him to be rewarded, you know, just in the first 15 minutes of the game against Notre Dame with, a, you know, that goal, um, that's just a reward for how hard he works um, at his game. He stays around every day about, a, you know, 30 to 45 minutes just working on little things. So. Um, it's also an example for other guys to just put the work in and good things are going to happen. Superb. And looking ahead, Coach, you've got a really tough uh, end of season schedule. You play Penn State next week in a really crucial game. And then, of course, you know, I know you don't want to look too far ahead, but you've got Indiana on the last game. You're tied at the top right now, 9-2-2. Two two. That's going to be huge, too. Yeah, I, I really have to go into coach speak here um, just because it's the way I think. Um, you know, we have Loyola on Wednesday, um, who's a tough derby for us. Um, you know, every game has been decided by one goal over the last, I don't know how many years. And then obviously Penn State comes into town on, on Sunday, you know, with, after a big win over Michigan State yesterday. So I, I know it's looming out there at the end of the year. Um, I guess we just got to do what we need to do in, in order to make that game have some value. But right now we're really focused on you know, Loyola on Wednesday and Penn State on Sunday. Now, Coach, tell us a little bit about the facilities and the plans Northwestern University have. How will that affect your program? and How will it, how will it improve your program? <clears throat> well, you know, we have one of the best views in the world in, in terms of watching a soccer game, no doubt. Um, the vistas, you know, with the, sky, sun, um, the lake out to the east and then the beautiful Chicago skyline to the south. You know, some of the amenities we haven't had are the ability to have, you know, locker rooms close to the field. Um, and also, we had to travel over where football is at Ryan Field a mile or so in order to train indoors on inclement, windy days, which, you know, sometimes as a lake is, is more often than not. But uh, the new facility coming in, I believe it's, you know, charted at $250 million. We'll have a, a full-size facility, 120 by 75, such that we're going to be able to train indoors um, you know, a lot and also have all the locker rooms, offices, training room and everything right in close proximity to our field. So uh, it's a real game changer for us. Uh, very excited about it. You know, uh, Dr. Phillips, our athletic director, you know, setting a course and a vision for for taking Northwestern to the next level. And uh, I'm just happy to be a part. Well, wow, that really sounds amazing, I have to say. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time. Congrats on everything so far this season. And we'll chat to you again soon. Kev. Kev, thanks for having us. Look forward to your emceeing debut uh, at the uh, Big Ten tournament sometime <laughs> next month. So um, pretty excited uh, about that here. Low pressure. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Coach. All the best. All the best. So Tim Lenehan's Northwestern and Indiana top the Big Ten men's standings. Aaron, it looks like a two-horse race. Yeah, absolutely, Kev. You know, as you talked about now in the talk back, this is uh, all boiling down to that final uh, game of the regular season. Hey, do you know what else is boiling down to the last week of the season? No idea. Yeah, no come idea, on, mate. you do know. You do know. Get off the fence. Let's roll it. Get off the fence. Look at this new beautiful animation. Get off the fence. Welcome in Aaron and myself, both 8 for 12 so far this season. You've got a nice picture for once, Kev. I know. It's respectable. Know. I'm not looking too bad there. My mom will be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Aaron. Let's start it all off this, this uh, week. Michigan at Indiana. Is this straightforward? Yes, absolutely. You know, in Indiana all the way for me. 2-0. 2-0 Indiana. 
I'll have to agree. I'm going to go 3-1 just to mix it up a little bit. I think Michigan will get a goal, um, and I think Indiana can score at will. So we'll go with 3-1 Indiana on this for this one. Wisconsin at Michigan State. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with Trask here. You know, having got a win last weekend, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip them again 2-1. 2-1. I'm going to go against you here. I'm going to go 1-0 Michigan State. All right, so this could, this could have a serious bearing on it next could, week. It could, it means that one of us, potentially, unless it's a tie, one of us will be going into the final week. I'm pretty confident. Up. You're always confident, but I don't think it really matters too much. Moving on. <laughs> Penn State at Northwestern. Huge game for the Wildcats at home. Very, very, very big game. Very much so. But at the home advantage, uh, you know, tips in my favour for uh, Northwestern to get the, get the victory 1-0. Okay, fair enough. I'm going to go 2-1. Northwestern have a habit of scoring two goals at home. Um, I think Penn State can potentially get a goal away from home. So I'm going to go 2-1 Northwestern. So that wraps your, it up for this your, week. Your friend Bob Warman won't be too happy with you there. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> 2-1 Northwestern it is. Let's look at what the Big Ten Network has in store for men's soccer this week. On Friday on BTN.com, Michigan traveling to Indiana. And then on Sunday, Wisconsin traveling to Michigan State. It's that game. That's at 1 o'clock Eastern time. A defining game for both Aaron and I in the Get Off Defense <laughs> segment. <laughs> All right, let's look at some women's action. It's our game of the week. Illinois traveling to Wisconsin. And what a game it was, too. Some fantastic scenes in the first half. Great shots on goal. A very even game throughout both sides throughout the contest with 15 shots each. And look at that for a top corner belter. Marissa Holden putting the Illini 1 0 up. Keeper had no chance. But then, with just seven and a half minutes remaining, Lindsay Holmes capitalizing on some defensive mistakes and she tucks it away again. Cracker of a finish, Aaron. She could do very little about that. Great goal. And then in overtime, 100 minutes on the clock. And the sensation that is Carol Walls turns and belts it home for a fine 2 1 win for Wisconsin. Now remember to check out. This week's women's game, Thursday on the Big Ten Network. It's Michigan at Ohio State. Huge game, and remember, that's a big, big rivalry. And for all your women's highlights, do tune in on Friday. For those of you that are off during the afternoon, Friday at 2.30 Eastern, it's the Women's Sports Report for all your soccer action, volleyball action, field hockey action. All you want is there, Aaron. So that's all we have for this week's episode. Aaron, give us a final thought before you go. Final weekend of the season, say no more. It's all, it's all burning down for a, for a great finale. Yeah, I think that Northwestern Penn State game will be crucial this week. All right, guys, well, do check us out on Twitter, at BTN Soccer Report. As always, please get your comments and questions into us. We'll check you out next week. Take care.